BMAC, you continue to get some of the biggest names in all of sports on your podcast, the All Things Covered podcast. You and Nick Saban had a candid conversation about Breeze earlier in the week. How different would, would your NFL coaching career have been, Coach, if you were able to sign Drew Brees to the well, Miami Dolphins? We, we had him. So, I mean, he didn't pass the physical. So, I mean, <laughs> and I had actually, you know, Jimmy Andrews, uh, who was, you know, he and Dr. Kane are our team doctors in Birmingham. And, you know, they operate on, uh, do surgery on quite a few NFL players and are very highly respected. And we were going to sign Drew Brees as a free agent or trade for Dante Culpepper. And both guys had been operated on in Birmingham by Dr. Andrews and Dr. Kane. Mm -hmm. So I went to Birmingham to talk to Dr. Andrews about, okay, what do you think about these guys? They got a chance to come back. You know, it's just a tough decision, lots of money. Um, and, and he actually said Drew Brees would be fine. Mm -hmm. but, after Drew Brees first, and he was more concerned about Dante Culpepper's knee uh, and how would it affect his mobility, you know, in the future as a player. And, um, you know, then our doctors in Miami didn't see it that way, but we had the deal done. So um, it probably would have changed, you know, my career uh, because when that happened, I was like, you know, very, very upset that I couldn't control my destiny because of somebody else's decision as a coach. Because uh -huh. you know, in the NFL, if you don't have a quarterback, you don't have a chance. So there it is, a true butterfly effect, not only at the NFL level, but in the career of Nick Saban and then at the college level. Uh, BMAC, your <clears throat> first thoughts when you hear those comments out of coach? Uh, I kind of, I wasn't surprised um, in, in hearing what he said. Now, I was surprised because I didn't know they actually had him sign. I didn't know that Dr. James Andrews, who's highly respected, you know, throughout the football world, actually said Drew Brees were pre was the best option when it came to the medical standpoint. I didn't know that either. And I think just hearing, and hearing Coach Saban talk about that, he still feels some type of way. Because I do believe if they signed Drew Brees and Drew Brees went on to be as healthy as he was in New Orleans, the Miami Dolphins would have been a better team. And one thing that Coach Saban did, did mention, you didn't get a chance to see, is that, heck, Miami just pretty, they just found a quarterback. Think about this. That was going back to 2006. They just found a quarterback. Now, granted, the jury is still out on Tua Tonga Vailoa, but think about the years that have went by with Miami searching for a quarterback. So me personally, hearing that story, I wasn't surprised, but I definitely was surprised to hear about, uh, hear Dr. James Andrews say, you mm -hmm. guys should sign Drew Brees. And I can tell you this much, the Alabama fans love the Dolphins watch that signing because they got an opportunity to get Nick Saban. And, and we all know the rest is history with his success he's been having there in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, that quarterback search in Miami, some would argue, continues. Uh, we will see what Tua Tagovailoa can do as the quarterback of the Miami Dolphins. But now a quarterback search is on in New Orleans. JJ, as you look forward to the prospects, obviously Taysom Hill still on that roster. But is he the one or the 1A? Uh, where do you think the Saints go here from the quarterback position standpoint? It's hard to imagine the Saints have any room under the cap. And in fact, they don't have any room under the cap to bring anyone on today uh, if they wanted to. Um, you know, there's been talk that there could be a Teddy Bridgewater reunion in New Orleans. They'd have to do a lot more cap gymnastics. They'd have to trade with an NFC South partner in order to get Teddy Bridgewater from Carolina. Not entirely sure that's going to happen. And so failing that, it looks like Taysom Hill, who reportedly just had his contract restructured, looks really just more like a one-year extension to the deal. Uh, you know, when you, when you get into, you start talking about the salary cap and all these mechanisms, things get uh, a little frenetic, but it's essentially, reportedly, a one-year contract extension uh, for Taysom Hill. And so putting aside whatever we think about Taysom Hill as a starting quarterback in the NFL week in and week out, very clearly, Sean Payton believes that he is. And you have Jameis Winston, who is an impending free agent, who would have to take a very, very low deal in order to come back.
to the Saints, who would have to look out into the quarterback market and say, you know what, there's nothing else better for me out there. I want to stick here, even though they picked Taysom over me when Drew went down during last season, even though Taysom's getting paid more again uh, than I certainly will. I still want to be here, even though there's not a Drew Brees to learn from. There's still a Sean Payton. So I'd have to imagine that Jameis is going to look for employment elsewhere. I'm not at all going to be surprised. Now, had you told me this a year ago, I would be surprised, but I'm not at all going to be surprised if in week one of the 2021 season, Taysom Hill is the starting quarterback of the New Orleans Saints. Well, for me, I think if you're Jameis Winston, you stay right in New Orleans because the market might not be ideal for him. Granted, he didn't play a lot. He, he doesn't have the same, he don't, he don't have the same leverage like Teddy Bridgewater had. Teddy Bridgewater started what five, six ball games and they won them all and he was real successful. Jameis didn't get the opportunities, but I think if you're Jameis, you continue to ride it out with the New Orleans Saints. I agree with Jonathan. He probably will have to take a team-friendly deal because of the cap restrictions. But if you have Jameis, you have Taysom, we believe this will be more of a normal, like, offseason, clearly a normal summer season, to say the least, when you talk about preseason football. And they compete. They compete. Because I think the jury is still out on Taysom Hill as a long-term answer there in New Orleans. Jameis has more experience. Taysom flash here or there, but I think the jury is still out on him and just allow these two guys to compete and the best man will win. But if you're the New Orleans Saints, you can't let Jameis walk. You cannot let Jameis walk for a few reasons. Number one, you don't know exactly what you have in Taysom Hill as a potential long-term answer. Number two, you lack depth at the most important position. And number three, Jameis might be the best pure quarterback option that you currently have there in New Orleans. So if you're Jameis, you might have to bite the bullet a little, a little bit, take a team-friendly deal just to stay right there in, in, in place in New Orleans. And if you're the Saints, you can't allow Jameis to walk because you don't have any depth outside of Taysom Hill if Jameis was to go elsewhere. And we will see how it all plays out at the quarterback position for the cash-strapped New Orleans Saints. Final thoughts here, guys, before we let you go. Uh, Drew Brees, with all due respect, did play in the Tom Brady, Peyton Manning era. Jonathan, how do you situate Drew Brees amongst the greats? Well, yeah, he's he's behind those two. Um, but, you know, when, when you talk about he's a top 10 quarterback in the NFL and you can borrow from boxing pound for pound mm. in terms of the quarterback position and potentially across the board uh, among athletes who have played NFL ball. I'd be hard pressed to think of another guy pound for pound when you consider his completion rate, when you consider how efficient uh, he is and how prolific of a passer he was at a position where you, you're not supposed to be that size and hold up for as long as he did. I'd, I'd say that Drew Brees is right up there among the greatest pound for pound uh, football players in NFL, modern NFL history and probably uh, the greatest pound for pound quarterback in NFL history. This is a this is a very very intriguing question, <laughs> and the reason why it's intriguing because I'm just going to put in this conversation the three goats: Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees. All outstanding quarterbacks, all quarterbacks that have won. But if you're talking about just pure talent, right? Pure talent. I think if you had to rank those three quarterbacks, I think you would have to put Drew Brees number one. Wow. I was waiting for you to I say it. I was waiting for there had, it is. Listen, Joe, Joe, Jonathan, if you're talking about just pure talent, undersized, but he has the numbers to back my statement. Yards, accuracy, and being able to do it in the manner in which he did it was something that we've never seen before. Look at Drew Brees in the pocket. He's a quarterback that's looking up because he couldn't see over the offensive line. For him to be as, as accurate as he's been, as he was in his career, that arm talent was magnificent. And, and you can say, well, he, sometimes he was a game manager. No, 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 no. He was an explosive quarterback as well. Peyton Manning arm talent was magnificent. The same can be said for Tom Brady, but I think if you talk about ranking their arm talent, Tom Brady probably would be third. I still would put Drew Brees over Peyton Manning because he was able to do everything those quarterbacks did but be doing it, and when you look at the measurables, measurables being undersized, that's that's magnificent. So, I mean, you talk about winning quarterbacks. So granted, you got to put Tom Brady, but you just talk about pure talent. If you talk about pure talent, arm talent, and then when you combine the above-the-shoulder game, 
the mentals, the cere cerebral nature in which he played with. I mean, I don't know if you guys agree with me or not, but if you talk about pure talent, those three quarterbacks, I think I might put Drew Brees number one. That's a man who's killing the podcast game as well. You could tell. You can tell VMAC coming out here with a take or two. We appreciate the thoughts and the insights, both of you guys. And you can catch more from VMAC and P2 on the All Things Covered podcast. You saw a little snippet there. People like Nick Saban coming by to talk to our guys. Download, subscribe, All Things Covered today. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.